Action. Do you know, we never had Mark V Mondeo failing taxi test with emission related issues. Hello, workshop. Alan, are you doing a talk on Mark V Mondeo Dieselgate? Yes, ma'am. I am on it. OK, everybody. Today we're going to talk about Ford Mondeo Mark V yet again. Well, where are you going? Come back. I know I bring nothing but bad news, but today the outcome is going to be a good one. We're going to talk about something positive, so stay tuned. Yeah, you heard right. We're going to talk about emissions today on a Mark V Mondeo and how good they are. Also, watch this. Yeah! What do you reckon? Me and Monica had a little bet. Who could purchase a YouTube t-shirt and air it on the, you know, on the TV? Not on the clothes dryer. Well, you know what I mean. But I'm the first. So I'm going to go in later after I finish this video and rub it in. If you like that, I think that's pretty damn cool. I'm going to go and sit down now and we'll talk about these emissions. So you heard of Dieselgate, the Volkswagen Group, their emission scandal, where they had some cleverly designed software, you know, to falsify their emission limits under test conditions. However, under real world driving conditions, I believe this was their two litre diesel engines, by the way, which was mainly in America. They were higher than they should have been. They got caught, they got their fingers burnt. Obviously other car manufacturers have been tested as well to see if they were on the same bandwagon as Volkswagen. Although I don't think any of the other car manufacturers have been blatantly abusing the system the same as Volkswagen. But anyway, today, because we have Mark V Mondeos here, this is what we're going to talk about. Now a Mark V Mondeo from 2015 onwards is what you would call a Euro 6. This is the European Union's latest incarnation of how they can slash the emission limits. In actual fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go out to the workshop in a minute and I'm going to do an emission test on a Mondeo with a Euro 6 emission system on it just to see what comes out of the tailpipe, just out of sheer, in, sheer interest. But when you look at your registration document, and this registration document, by the way, is for a 2015 Mark V Mondeo. Near the bottom of the registration document, there's a section called exhaust emissions. And generally speaking, on an MOT test, we're testing the soot or the smoke that comes out the back. But on a Euro 6 car, you're not really going to see any smoke. What the European Union is banging on about is not about the smoke so much, it's about what's called NOx. NOx is oxides of nitrogen. These are the dangerous particles that are damaging to our health. That's what they're trying to cut down. And if I give you some kind of example, Euro 4 and 5 cars, the, the limits of grams of oxides of nitrogen per kilometre were about 0.018. On Euro 6 cars, they're 0.08. So they've brought it down quite a lot. And car manufacturers have had to respond to this and make their emission systems that much better in order to meet these limits. You can understand why Volkswagen have been trying to cheat the system. It must be very difficult. And no, there is no Mondeo gate. That's just the, the title. <laughs> I just thought I'd put that in there. I thought it would be funny. Anyway, let me just grab this out of the box. So I'm going to show you something here. So as far as I'm aware, there's a couple ways car manufacturers are able to reduce these oxides of nitrogen, which are caused by burning fuels in our diesel cars. And the first way is the EGR valve. This particular EGR valve is fitted to a Mark V Mondeo. And what it does, it takes a portion of exhaust gases and mixes them with intake air, which lowers the burning temperature of the engine, thus eliminating these oxides of nitrogen. But I have to say, the actual size of this EGR valve is disgustingly huge. I 
don't think it's the best system to use. In, in fact, I think this is a Mark V's baby. I actually pity the woman who would have to give birth to something like this. Anyway, the second way is what's called Add Blue. It's a liquid that is squirted into a catalyst and through the exhaust of our diesel cars. That liquid then causes a chemical reaction and thus at the tailpipe you get nothing but water and nitrogen, which is harmless. However, Add Blue, I believe, is a bit of a con as well. It is something you've constantly got to keep topping up on your car. A lot of cars drink it like bloody water and why the hell are they calling it Add Blue? I don't know because it is not Add Blue. There is actually nothing blue about Add Blue. In fact, if they called it Add Green or Add Yellow, they'd be closer to the mark because what it is is urine. Add Blue is basically urine, okay? But they've just sugarcoated it with a nice name. That's why in some of these Volkswagen cars you'll see a badge on the back saying Blue Motion. It's a good selling point, isn't it? I don't think it would sound so nice if they called it Green or Yellow Motion. But anyway, it's another way of eliminating these oxides of nitrogen and that's the main thing at the end of the day. However, there is a third alternative to reducing emission limits. You have to go over to France to find that out. What's that guy's name, the president over there? You know the one who compares himself to the god Jupiter? That's it, Macron. His idea of reducing exhaust emissions in the European Union is basically to increase the fuel tax to such an extortionate amount that nobody in France can afford to run their bloody cars anyway, so nobody can go to work. And of course, when the people come out in protest, what does he do? He calls them thugs. So what started off as a few thousand protesters then turned into tens of thousands of protesters. What they call themselves, the gilets jaunes, the yellow vests. So you see, even some of our so-called leaders haven't got a bloody clue what it takes to lower exhaust emissions. In fact, I'll, I'll go as far to say, the amount of fires that have been burning in Paris the last two months, Macron has been single-handedly contributing to global warming. <laughs> anyway, no, I'm not doing politics because I'm telling you now, if I start talking about politics, I'm not going to bloody well stop. Let's go and do an emission test on a Mark V Mondeo instead. So we've got this Mark V Mondeo here. Natural fact, this is a 65 plate and I've only just serviced it. And just so you can see what kind of mileage this car has done. This car was 191,000 miles on it and we've had it here since brand new. So when you take into consideration the amount of mileage on this car right now, I can say this has been serviced approximately every 15,000 miles since it was new. It has 030 engine oil and a fuel filter every 30,000 miles. In fact, before I carry out this emission test, I'm just going to put it up in the air a bit so you can see the tailpipe on the exhaust. But if you ever drove old diesel cars, you would know how the tailpipes get really sooted up. But on these Euro 6 cars, you're going to see now how absolutely spotlessly clean they are. So in case you've never inspected the tailpipe of your Mark V Mondeo, take a look at this. Is that clean or is that clean? You could almost eat your dinner off that tailpipe. So this is just a pure interest. I'm going to carry out an emission test on this Mark V Mondeo just to see what the readings are going to be. Because you've got to take into consideration, this is a Euro 6 car. The tailpipe is clean, so we actually know the emissions are going to be fine. But I just want to see what the readings are, how close they are to zero. So over here, we have our diesel testing emission machine. And I have already entered the registration number of the car. So I shall press continue. Now this screen is actually quite interesting because it gives you the information of the year range for Euro 4 and 5 cars and it tells you when Euro 6 was first implemented. So we know the car we're dealing with is 2015, so we're going to click on Euro 6 and it's asking now 
for the plate value. So looking at the chassis plate on our vehicle, we can see it's got a value of 0.50 down here, but also, it also tells you it's a Euro 6 here, so we know what this car is. So back on our computer screen, I can type in that value of 0.50, and then move on. It's basically telling me now the oil temperature of the engine has got to be at a minimum of 60 degrees. I've already run the engine up to it's nice and hot, but I've kept the engine off while I'm recording, otherwise you wouldn't be able to hear myself. So, once again, this screen's just telling you how to check the engine oil. And our temperature probe is reading a good engine temperature, just over 65 degrees. So what you've got to do is shove one of these up the exhaust tailpipe, and that's going to take a reading of the exhaust gases. What will happen now, the computer will ask me to start the vehicle's engine and blip the throttle. It will then go into the emission test. If the first rev of the engine passes the emissions, that is the test over. If it doesn't pass the emissions, it will take up to six attempts to see if it will pass. So, but I'm, I'm pretty confident this is going to pass on the first rev. I just know that by the look of the tailpipe anyway. But on a dirty old diesel, and especially a lot of old diesels, they're going to struggle like hell to get through because they're really hammered down on these emission limits. So what I'll do now is I'll just actually do the test and I'll put the camera down by the tailpipe so you can actually see there's actually nothing coming out of the tailpipe of this car. Did you see that? Look how close to zero them limits are. That is absolutely incredible. We've got a smoke reading of 0.03. That's almost as good as a BMW. In all the few years that we've had these Mark 5 Mondeos, I have never actually seen any smoke come out of one of these exhausts, and I've never had an emission-related problem, apart from the EGRs taking a dump, which we all know about. You know, carrying out a diesel emission test on a diesel engine is not very nice. The actual engine has got to be revved up flat out until the limit of cuts in and you've got to hold them revs for a few seconds. And some of these diesel cars, they rev pretty damn high. You know, the one thing that does bother me, here in Huntingdon, these taxis are bought brand spanking new from Ford. They are delivered here and we have to then take them down to a testing station where they have to have an MOT when these cars are brand new. And as everybody knows, here in the UK, you don't have an MOT test until your car is three years old. But that doesn't apply for taxis. And I have stated in a previous video about some of these cars actually burning oil. I wonder if that's got something to do with them having a mission test too early on. Maybe we could call this Huntingdonshire District Council Gate. I should investigate, you know. If I don't find nothing in two years' time, hell, We'll just blame it on the Russians, right? <laughs> right then, I think I'll pop in the office, show off my new t-shirt, rub it in a little bit. Come on! Well, hi Miss M. Hey, do you like my... What? What? Like my what? Oh my God. You know, I like your t-shirt, Monica. So, when... Where did you get your t-shirt from? Well, Red Bubble, obviously. And where did you get yours, Alan? Before you open your mouth and say something you regret, remember, I'm the efficient one here. So let's us to finish the video now. Okay, folks, I get it. I'm the pollutant here. Bye! Bye. Alan, are you doing talk on my... Five, one, zero, these, okay. <laughs> Action. Was that too quick? Oh, once more. <laughs> Whoa, where are you going? Come back. To... <laughs> In three, two, one. <laughs>